the prevalence of exospinal arthritis was recently studied in the United States. In the uh, ENHANCE study, which is the National Health and Nutritional Examination Survey study, and this was done between 2009 to 2010, it was found that about 1% of the U.S. population has axial spinal arthritis. And this was a population-based study, which is, uh, this is the population prevalence. This is the gold standard. This is not the case-based study, what patients come to your clinic. This is what happens in real life in general population of United States. We also found out, interestingly, that nearly 20%, 19.4% of patients within the U.S. have chronic low back pain. Chronic back pain is three months or longer. 5% to 6% of the patients uh, amongst those chronic back pain would ultimately have axial spondyloarthritis. So if you do the math, in the total population, about 1% of the general population of United States has axial spondyloarthritis. Within that, again, half the patients would have ankylosing spondylitis and half would have non-radiographic axial spondyloarthritis. If you look at the burden of the disease, that's very similar between non-radiographic axial spondyloarthritis and ankylosing, spondylit uh, ankylosing spondylitis. As I said earlier, ankylosing spondylitis patients have definitive radiographic changes of sacroiliitis. They may also have some radiographic changes in their spine. So their disability, their difficult to work, their signs and symptoms, they are, because of inflammation plus radiographic changes, the structural damage. In non-radiographic, there is not structural damage as yet, but they have got high level of inflammatory burden. So from the patient's point of view, the signs and the symptoms and the pain and the stiffness and the difficulty to work and or inability to work, et cetera, is very similar. And there are several studies to look at this quality, health-related quality of life, the disability, the problems with work, et cetera, et cetera, in both these conditions, and it is very comparable. The ENHANCE study also found out that the, the disease generally starts uh, at a younger age. Um, it's in the second decade or third decade of uh, life, uh, it is axial spondyloarthritis. So ankylosing spondyloarthritis is three is to two or three is to one male to female. So ankylosing spondylitis is more common in men. The non-radiographic axial spondyloarthritis is equal, one is to one. So when I said earlier, some patients with non-radiographic will progress to ankylosing spondylitis, it tells us that male sex is a risk factor for progression of non-radiographic to radiographic. That's why there are more patients with who are men who are ankylosing spondylitis. When it comes to non-radiographic, it is equal. Another thing that was found is that the prevalence, it starts, I mean, the disease generally starts in their teenagers or in their 20s, maybe in their 30s. Almost always, the disease starts before the age of 40, 45. It's very rare for axial spondyloarthritis to start after the age of 45.